Yo, it's Pipsqueak, and today is Wednesday, the day before I leave for the US again to participate in the Ludwig Invitational and at Summit. So I wanted to get a video out right before I leave, which didn't leave me that much time for editing. So I decided to go for a more traditional analysis video of my set versus none. And I won't be pausing very much. I want to make this as digestible as possible. And I've got some key points I want to go over. But the reason I want to analyze this is because people always ask for, you know, how to play versus Falcon or what my opinion is on Fox versus Falcon. So I thought I'd give you something, you know, uh, maybe a little bit less serious, but more of a like uh, summary of my thoughts on it and some advice I have in the matchup. For one, you're going to see me make something I consider a big mistake in this matchup at the very start, which is uh, overusing full jumps, where I think the main thing that Foxes do way too much in this matchup is full jumping, because again, every aerial Falcon has kind of beats it out. You see him with punish it twice, and then the one time I hit, it's like, oh, I didn't even hit anything, and then I go grab it again. So let's start out by saying don't overuse full jumps. Uh, I think there's one good full jump in this matchup, and it's uh, full jump towards them onto a side platform, because Falcon really struggles to punish you when you land on the side platform afterwards. Mm. Now, instead of full jumping, I think the reason people do it, including me in game one here, is because they're scared of Falcon. But you really don't have to be that scared of Falcon, because every aerial he has, uh, hits too high at the start or has too much startup to hit you before they're reactable. Rather, you can react to Falcon jumping and shield on reaction, which is something you can't really do in other matchups, but it makes it way safer to play versus Falcon than other matchups because, you know, you do a lot of run in shield, but you also can just stand still and press shield if he's, you know, landing next to you. Uh, and if he ever is like full jumping above you, you just press shield. Now, Technically, you can Tomahawk to beat that, but you can buffer jump to option select that, where if you think he's gonna Tomahawk, you can hold C stick up at the very, very moment he's about to land, and you'll have shield at his aerials and jump like after the aerial. Uh, and then if he did a Tomahawk, you jump before a grab comes out. Which is actually really useful uh, versus Falcon, way more so than you'd think, because. Um, he, uh, he doesn't really have anything fast enough, and every aerial except uh, knee is pretty, you know, negative on shield. Uh, Nair is minus two, perfectly. But in practice, 99% of the time, you're gonna be able to do uh, a buffer jump out before you get jabbed. Which means if he does, like, Nair jab the normal way, you just jump between and then you land on him with whatever aerial you want. Hmm. Notice that in this game, almost every single way I've lost neutral has been due to uh, full jumping. Uh, so, you know, stop that past me. But also, even then, I still do pretty well. And a big reason for that is that I know the spacings in neutral that really mess him up, like right there. This is one of the only, like, okay jumps. When you have this spacing, you can you can jump for the back here. I, I only think this is good when he doesn't have space, so... I wouldn't do it here normally. I think you get so messed up for, you know, being wrong. But if he doesn't have space, doing a full jump at this spacing is really good, because then he can't dash backwards. Here it worked out, but it's not something I agree with with past me. Uh, but it does highlight that you can get away with a lot of stuff in this matchup being wrong, as long as your edge guards are on point. And I have a video specifically on how to edge guard Falcon. I messed up a ton in that first game but I'm going to be more consistent the later the set goes on. Uh, so you'll see that flowchart in action. Um, and I'll link the guide in the description as well. Now, two things. First of all, I go for a grab. And I go for a grab. At zero, grab does nothing for you, basically. I think grab is pretty garbage until 37%, where you can start doing up throw nair. And up throw nair knocks down and true combos at that percent. Before that point, you have a ton of different, like, pseudo-real combos that Falcon can get out of, but no Falcon is gonna, like, consistently get out of all of them. So, uh, you really shouldn't be grabbing, like, that much, but if they overuse shielding, it's okay. Here we have an example of how short Fox is. Aside from shielding on reaction, 
It's worth noting that your wave dash and your dash both go under like his nair when it's at its peak. So you can just wave dash under him or, you know, move under him. And it makes it so annoying to hit Fox. So that's something you really have to like abuse versus Falcon. How annoying it is to hit Fox. There's also a specific spacing in neutral that I think is super key to the matchup. And it's right where I land from this back here. If you're gonna play neutral versus Falcon, this spot here is like the perfect spacing you want to be at like 100% of the time almost because none of his rising aerials hit you, which is the only way that he gets like aerial hits that are unreactable. So his only real like threat is um, uh, grab and his grab is, you know, good. But if that's the only thing you're scared of, it's not that good. So in this spacing, you are you are safe relative to where you are on other spaces on the screen. Like, if you're further away, you're about as safe as you are here. However, he's not safe from you here. Your bur burst range is still longer than this, so you can burst range him, but he can't really burst range you nearly as well. Uh, and a good quirk of this bot is that a lot of the time, this is the spacing where if you press a nair in his face, you either hit the start above his nair or in between the nair hits. So right here, I hit in between the nair hits. We can look at it one last time. And you'll see that it's due to the spacing where I just go in between and hit him off and it's great. Now, when I was playing Nun, one thing I noticed, which I always notice, is that his grab game, I think, is pretty weak. This is, those two stocks are like the only times this set where his grab is actually gonna lead to anything. And right here, he does a side B which uh, is decent. He tries to gimmick me a little bit. I'm starting to realize here that he's playing to make me scared. He's gonna do a lot more raw grab and a lot of like flashy things. Like he's gonna do a lot of really flashy combos with the like stomps and stuff, uh, which, you know, I don't think he'd normally do hard callouts like that. I think he's feeling himself a lot. You see it with his movement. A lot of it's like, oh, I'm in the zone kind of. Uh, and paradoxically, that's when I get less stressed, because I'm like, wait, I've played Falcon. This up B as well, I think he's gonna get the kill from it, but I don't think it's very good. Um, and right here, I like super calm down, and I'm like, oh, you're not even like playing to win, kind of. You're playing to stress me out so that you win the next games easier. Fuck up an edge guard, but you have time to roll. It's an important part. His first hit in air, it doesn't like do that much if you're grounded. So you actually have time to roll in between hits. Uh, you have time to shine as well, which becomes relevant later in the set. I get a wave dash out jab that kills. Uh, and now I start playing a lot better than I did before. I play more grounded. Not yet, but I will. Um, messes that punish up. I will say, if you look back at the set after this analysis, because I sure as hell won't, um, you should be on the lookout for like my success rate with shine because it's very low and i think that's an important part is that i think a lot of foxes overuse shine in this matchup in neutral because all of falcon's aerials jump over it you can do it really effectively after your aerials hit but in neutral i think like running shine and you know wake up shine are all pretty bad versus falcon so that's a big recommendation i have is to not overuse those um, since his aerials hit so, like, far above you, a lot of the time you can actually just, like, dash through him. I, I showed how you can wave dash through earlier. And that's definitely, like, still a thing where you can, you can definitely just, like, go through it if you're in the corner. Here's an example of one thing I think makes this matchup, like, really good for Fox. He's one of the few characters that can really punish Falcon for throwing out aerials in neutral, uh, willy-nilly. Where... Uh, your overshoot Nair beats like his Lord Stomp if he spaces it to beat your non-overshoot. And that mix up doesn't sound that good, but he very quickly runs out of space. So here um, I see him do the Nair and I do an overshoot and sure he dodges it, but the timing and spacing to uh, get like a Stomp there is super difficult. His Nair is also technically minus two, but in practice it's more minus than that. So you get, what's it called? You get a free like buffer jump out between his nair and his jab, which I don't use a lot in this set, but versus Falcons that like to do like nair gentlemen, 
it just gives, gives you a free neutral win every time. And it's an easy execution. I have a video on it as well. Here, none messes up a down air, which is unfortunate. I get a roll out. And then here. Here's the full jump I think is good. It's so hard for Falcon to punish this nair up. And then you almost always trade with what happens after. Or sometimes you time in between the hits and then get, you know, the hit like this. And then bam, this is the edge guard. Uh, you roll to ledge and then you go from there. But I got scared because I was stressed. So I do shine instead, but it works out. Ideally, you just keep back airing there. Uh, I have a video on it. Highly recommend you watch it if you're curious. Now, that was the closest the set is going to be. I think I free stock him or two stock him the next game. Uh, but note that he destroyed me at the start with his like read heavy playstyle, so to speak. But then the like odds didn't favor him. And I think that's super important versus him is that none doesn't have that good of a punish game from grabs. I get out for free. I get out for free. If you look at those two grabs, uh, let's see, first one, I do more damage than him. Second one, I deal more damage than him. When you think about that, you realize you don't have to be that scared of it. So I definitely play without fear of getting grabbed. Here, I mentioned it before, if you hold down on Nair 1, uh, in, in ASD down you have 7 frames, but with CC I think you have like 10 or 12 frames. Uh, to do any move between his second hit and the first hit. So right there, I just shine. It's a super wide window. Easy if he goes for the nair in, and that's a free kill. Short up upper and short up back air are way stronger in this matchup than most because they consistently hit stomp, which is like, you know, super valuable, uh, whereas nair can sometimes go too low. Also here, I meant to do wiggle out, grab ledge, but, you know, I was late and I got need. Uh, 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 near to platform, near to platform. Here is how ridiculous the, like, height aspect is. Look at this here. I'm gonna... See here, I land, and I'm crouching. And then frame one, I'm gonna do an up tilt. I haven't started my up tilt here. He's right above me. Think about how ridiculous this is in any other matchup. I have not started my up tilt. I start my up tilt, and bam, it trades. It doesn't lose, it trades in that position. That's how ridiculous like the height difference is and how much it benefits you. Grab at high percent is very, very good. Uh, it leads to almost nothing under 37%, but afterwards it's a super, super strong confirm into a short up Nair or into, um, you know, an edge guard like Nair Nair or whatever. You can get tech chase or edge guard, up to you. Mm -mm -mm. Here... This is not a good example of this, but another thing, aside from panic jumping the foxes do, is that they throw out too many moves preemptively when all the falcon is looking for is a whip punish. Here, he's obviously going for the back air, and I think I'm like one, you know, uh, millimeter away from hitting. But in general, this is something you want to be on the lookout for. When is falcon looking for the grab with punish, and when is he jumping? Because he can't really do both at once. Here's a small nitpick on myself. Tech chasing with shine is ridiculous. It makes the tech chase on him 10 times easier. You can tech chase his tech in place and his rolls with shine, and it's very consistent. However, you should do an up smash here. If he DS in, I get an up smash back here and he's off stage, or I get an off up smash up air and he dies, depending on percent. If he DS out, I always get a good edge guard. Uh, at best a 50 50 for him, but sometimes if he DS wrong, it's just guaranteed death. So the up tilt here. Kind of a grief. I still end up killing from it, but you know, I didn't have to go through this entire thing. I do, however, show a second part of the edge card, which is that you can miss this back air, but he has to space around the second back air here so that you know you always get ledged before him, which is a huge part of why the edge guard is so consistent because you can just put it out as a wall that doesn't necessarily have to hit him. And here's something funny happens I get stomped and our wall tech somehow and I got a wall jump out. And now, just to illustrate how ridiculous the height difference is, aside from the earlier, like, up tilt clip, take a look at his neutral when I'm down here. I do full jump nair, do full jump nair, do full jump nair. How does he really hit me here? He doesn't. So, you know, I get a ton of 3%, 67%, and then bam, I trade here, and that's 82%. So, this spot is so hard for Falcon to win, if you play it right. Take a note of my spacing here. I go for the one free hit, and then I try and like read a jump. He doesn't do it, but even here, I go high, get grabbed. I do get my jump back, 
I go here, I trade. This should just be a free grab ledge for me, but I accidentally press four there and then die. Uh, but 96%, this is a huge part, is that if he jumps, he's screwed here. So I like doing the nair through, like slight behind, and then just a full jump aerial, because if he jumps, he gets hit, and it's over. Here, super good example of the spacing to play, where you want to play, you know, at your max range aerials. Like, if he does a wave dash down here instead of a, like, slight back, this hits him and he dies. Uh, obviously, he can technically be invincible, but that is an execution test that I am more than willing to take at this percent. Worst case, he shields it. I did a low back here. Who cares? I do a second one. It hits his shield. However, I'm outside his, like, grab range, so it's safe. And now we come into the problem, right? It takes forever for me to be hit here. Which, even though I'm going to get hit, it gives me time to, like, react. It, it, and even if I don't get shield up or do something else, it still gives me time to recognize the situation. And I use that to DI away, and then I don't get hit by the jab. Which, you know, happens again here, and I go so far away that I can actually, like, nair before he can. So, even when you're not using the spacing to hit him, notice how, like, less risky it is to be hit here compared to being hit point blank. So playing in that spacing is like the key to the matchup. And then here, this is where the full jump backer is good, like I mentioned earlier, when he doesn't have space to go backwards, because, you know, he can't really do anything about it. And the backer almost always trades with all of his aerials, so he can't really, like, get around it very easily. And that is, like, all I really want to do in this video right here. I think Fox pretty clearly beats Falcon, mostly because the execution required to you know, combo and kill Falcon is way lower on Fox's end than vice versa. But also because neutral is super rough for Falcon to deal with how short Fox is. Uh, if Fox was like a centimeter higher, the matchup would legitimately be like way better for Falcon. But he isn't, so you know, we take those. And then um, four key points I want you to look out for is uh, your edge guarding. You really have to be on point with that. You can watch my video on it. And then reactive shielding. When you're panicking, do not panic full jump or panic shine. Those are habits that are good in other matchups, but Falcon decimates them. Almost every set you'll see of a fox that loses to Falcon, it's because they panic full jump or they panic shine. So avoid those like your life depends on it, because it actually does. The third thing is to look at the spacing in neutral and, you know, remember what I said. I haven't been super specific, but you can see the distance I'm from Falcon in like every clip I post. And uh, finally, be mindful of which mode Falcon is in. Is he looking for walling aerials on your approaches or is he looking to uh, whiff punish your up tilts on the ground or like going for raw dash grabs? Mm. And that's about it, I think. That's all I want to say today. So I hope that's been helpful. It's a little bit on, you know, the less serious side, but I wanted to see what I could do with an unscripted analysis. So if you enjoyed this and want me to do more, then please leave a comment. This is by far the easiest like content I can do. So, you know, I will pump, pump out more if it's um, appreciated. And with that, that's enough for me. So goodbye.